Are you hunting for a solution for your commercial or residential rooftop? Well, don't look any further than Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated. You can check out Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated at flawlessroofing.ca. You can also check them out on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook as well under Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated. Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated has been in operation since 2012 and offers superior roofing solutions for both commercial and residential rooftops. Owner and operator Daniel Felice prides himself on working with only the top of the line materials, including Lexcon and LexCore products. With over 30 years of experience in the roofing industry, Flawless Roofing provides exceptional roofing solutions and is sure to exceed your expectations. Also, currently, Flawless Roofing is one of the few recognized EPDM installers in Northern Ontario. Check out their website, that's flawlessroofing.ca. Check out again their website, flawlessroofing.ca, or check them out on Facebook, Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated. You can contact them at 705-943-1777. Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated, offering superior roofing solutions for both commercial and residential rooftops. Flawless Roofing, protect your investments, start at the top. The In the Pocket Edition is brought to you by and sponsored by Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill is located on 624 Wellington Street West in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And it's Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario's best sports bar for six years in a row and the home to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario's best wings. Sports Center Bar and Grill and the Game Sports Show have been a family and a unit together since January 2016. You can check them out on Facebook or on Instagram. That's at Sports Center SSM. You can also give them a call to order takeout today. That's 705-946-2826. Or just go check them out on Wellington Street West, 624 in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. Booyah, and it's time for the Game Sports Show. This is the In the Pocket Edition, Season 6, Episode 11 of In the Pocket, sponsored by Sports Center Bar and Grill, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario's best sports bar, and also Flawless Roofing, Sure Seal Incorporated. I am your host, David McKaig Jr., and I am joined tonight by the one and only Justin Heichel. Justin, welcome back, man. I know it's been a few weeks, a few weeks. Wow, let me crack myself right off the hop. A few months off for appropriate reason as you uh, have been taking care of a little one, uh, a very cute little one, may I add, in the household. Yeah, we uh, recently acquired a human. Um, <laughs> we're uh, about two, uh, three days out of two months old right now. Oh, there you go. Um, so we're, uh, we're moving along, but uh She's uh, in bulk mode right now, definitely uh, on a, a weight gain cycle. So it's, uh, it's been pretty entertaining, definitely learning a few things. I'm sure and, the cries uh, are echoing. I'll, to be honest, it couldn't have come at a better time because the football season from my end of things got really bad really fast. So <laughs> good distraction. And as everybody knows, Justin Heichel cheers for the Indianapolis Colts. Yours truly cheers for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But here on In the Pocket... We talk all things football, of course, NFL, NCAA, when it comes to local. And when everyone's wondering, oh, what do you mean by local? It's Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. That is the Algoma region and also Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. But we like to give love to everything news when it comes to the world of football. And I mean American football, not the football that we have another podcast on. Speaking of, on the Game Sports Show platform and the T-Gem platform as well. T-Gem is what powers the Game Sports Show, the game, entertainment, media. Check out the T-Gem Network YouTube channel. You're going to see a lot of marketing for T-Gem in 2023, finally, as uh, it's been long overdue due to its early launch. Very excited uh, to see all of that and all the categorized podcasts that we have on that channel. But through the Game Sports Show, we have a podcast called Full Time. Season 3 kicked off tonight with uh, Daniel Scarpino and Gitano Gallo. That will be uploaded tomorrow for your enjoyment. Uh, we also have some Butch on Sports uploads that occurred this week as well. You can check that out on the thegamesportshow.podbean.com. And yours truly also had... A big announcement upload is what I called it, a special announcement upload that you can check out on all platforms. The Game Sports Show announcement upload from January 10th, 2023. That is yesterday, as today is January the 11th. Check it on all platforms. It's about 36 minutes of me giving you a lot of detail about the updates on the Game Sports Show with a little bit of a dash of ingredients for TGEM. Now, 
Upcoming this week, we have a special edition upload that will be aired on the TGM Network YouTube channel as well as the Game Sports Show distribution channels as well, such as Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon podcast platforms. A special edition upload with Kelly Rudy. Yes, that is, you heard that correctly. Special edition number 59, yours truly and Alex Parr uh, had an interview with Kelly Rudy, the one individual that you hear echoing through your halls on Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday and played for Los Angeles Kings, San Jose Sharks, big mental health advocate uh, and just an even better person. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Kelly. You know, I've been able to keep in touch and build a little friendship with him. Uh, in particular, with Scott's passing, he was very, very generous in reaching out uh, calmly to yours truly to, to talk and just follow up and definitely a big fan of the game sports show he is and it's going to be a very very exciting uh, piece of content that will be uploaded on Friday just great talk about the sh- uh, the stories he had playing with Gretzky when he got traded uh, to the LA Kings how he didn't <laughs> he was surprised he was mad oh it was fantastic so make sure you got that marked on your calendar to check out and speaking of Friday the 13th as I mentioned on the Gain Sports Show so, uh, announcement upload there will be the gala for the Strive Young Professionals yours truly has been nominated for two awards on behalf of the TGM platform and uh, the Game Sports Show and hopefully to bring home some W's there for TGM and the Game Sports Show, but certainly going to be tough. There's a lot of great entrepreneurs uh, in the city of Sault Ste. Marie, and Heiko can attest to that. Here on In the Pocket, Sports Center Bar and Grill and Flawless Roofing are the sponsors, and we're going to get into... Uh, the all things football in terms of the pick'em standing results for the regular season, but it still goes into the playoffs. We're going to talk about the NFL playoffs kicking off, and we are also going to get into some news about some particular teams uh, in the National Football League. But as I mentioned here on In the Pocket, this is actually, and this is actually what I mentioned on the special edition upload. Sorry, is what I should say. Uh, this game sports show announcement upload again. I should correct myself once more that this will be the last show that yours truly is the main host of In the Pocket. I will still be on In the Pocket throughout the rest of the season since it's playoff time and Super Bowl. You're certainly going to hear my voice, but there will be different hosts. Those hosts being EJ Russell, Justin Heichel, and hopefully. The projected return of Matt Primo will be one as well. Uh, And after this season, going into season seven, there will be a new rotational host pattern with yours truly coming on as a guest. So, Hike, I'm glad that it's you and me uh, for the last official that I'm hosting, but obviously I'm not going anywhere, especially when it comes to in the pocket and top shelf. Doing these new rotational hosts, I cannot leave those shows officially, uh, but I am excited to start the Game Sports Show podcast on Mondays and really focus on getting all these interview uploads out and focus on the TGM Network platform. About five minutes in here, got all the housekeeping items done. I've introduced Hike and and again, congratulations to you, Justin, for uh, having a little one. You acquired a human. I love that way in your household. Uh, and it's just been, it's already been a couple months. So that's amazing. But I want to go over to you to start off and kick off in the pocket. Let's talk pick them. The regular season's done. We'll be nice and announce who's in first for the regular season. Okay, everyone's going to wonder that. We'll go through the standings for the regular season. But the playoffs do count still uh, for in terms of, of points, if anyone doesn't uh, remember how the pick em works. Justin, I'll leave it to you. Let's talk pick em, And then I want you to make your picks for this week's uh, playoff action. All right. Well, uh, let's, uh, we'll dive into the standings here for the regular season. I mean, uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot's changed in uh, two months. <laughs> EJ's still in first. Uh, finished the regular season with 171 correct picks and uh, 98 incorrect. Mm. I like I like to mention the 98 incorrect because he he like he right under 100. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Very. Uh, good. Dave, you're in second. Uh, 163 correct on the year. 106 wrong. Uh, I'm in third place. Uh, 157 correct. 112 wrong. And uh, Tyler in fourth. Oof. Not spectacular. No, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. What? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna throw the number out there because I have a feeling there was a couple of weeks where the picks just weren't put in in time, and we're not gonna. No, we're not gonna publicly shame them for that. Definitely so. not. You, my friend, made a good battle back too. You and me have been neck and neck for that two three all season. Spot. All season, it's been like that. It's like if I can give an example, it's like you got a top team in a in a in a division. And then you got the two other teams in the division who are just as good as that top team, 
but now we got to play each other in the playoffs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wish, yeah. you know, that's the example I would give. You and I have been neck and neck, and uh, it's certainly, it's been exciting this year. But we're not done. You're just six points behind, but 61% and 58% uh, accuracy, respectively, is uh, pretty good numbers for the season. Bellet, you could take uh, Week two, I fucked myself. I only got six right. Awesome. That was the uh, that was the big one there. See, my best week was fourteen right, I believe, and I be- and that was a uh, big thir- thirteen thirteen in week thirteen. Ah, wow, see? see, and I, I that's my that's my number thirteen. It it just all works out. Anyone in week thirteen, make sure you bet on Dave because that is the week, obviously. Evidently, yeah, no kid. <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, let's dive into this week here. I mean, uh, matchups finally settled after a big day there on Sunday. Lions kind of got hosed there at, right at the end of the Seattle game. But <sighs> say la vie. Uh, so San Fran, Seattle kicking it off Saturday at 4.30. I've been back and forth on this one because, I mean, Seattle's kind of like the same complete team. Not not complete, but they're everyone's healthy that's been there all year for the most part. Um, so I have a hard time picking against them. However... Uh, I'm riding the Brock Purdy train on this one, and I'm taking San Fran over Seattle. Uh, and then the eight o'clock game Saturday, we got Jacksonville and the Chargers. I am taking Jacksonville in this one. Uh, I've been fascinated watching Trevor Lawrence the last few weeks. I mean, I maybe I just didn't know he was good because uh, I didn't pay attention, or they were a division rival. But man, that guy's got wheels, and his release on the ball is absolutely ridiculous. Yep. And to be honest, I I think the Chargers have just kind of limped into the playoffs. <laughs> like they kind of just hung around all season. They haven't. And Keenan Allen barely played all year. Mike Williams, I don't know if he's going to be good to go. So I think Jacksonville's riding a bit of a heater, and I think they win this game. Uh, Buffalo over the Dolphins, taking the Bills. Dolphins are terrible. Uh, Tua is not playing. So I mean, and, and I mean, Miami barely made the playoffs. So. Taking the Bills, they should have this handedly. Uh, Giants in Minnesota. Even though the game's in Minnesota, I'm going to take the Giants on this one. I took the Giants in the beginning of the season to win the division. I think this is going to be an entertaining game. However, if the Colts did what they did to Minnesota, even though they let them come back and win in the most embarrassing thing that happened in this I was going to ask you about that at the end of this point, in this particular segment, because you haven't been able to give that feedback yet. But you can keep going. We'll uh, get to that. <laughs> I watched the entire game and dressed our daughter up in a little cheerleader outfit, and she had no say in it. She had to deal with that embarrassment dressed in an outfit. And... <laughs> Like, thank God she doesn't know. She just doesn't know that this happened. Sure. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm taking the Giants in that one. Uh, and then uh, Sunday uh, Sunday nighter, Cincy and Baltimore, uh, I'm taking Cincy. And Baltimore, I think, is on a third-string quarterback. So, uh, Bengals. And then uh, the Monday nighter, Tampa and Dallas. Interesting note right now. I believe Tom Brady is 6-0 and against the Cowboys in his career. So, so uh, I think we know where my pick's going to lie on that one. I am taking the buck. And what uh, about those tiebreakers? Because they matter. Oh, gonna, Did you know that? They all right. matter. They do. They yeah. actually, they pointed, I think it was, might have been you and me, actually. Yeah, there was a week where there was a tiebreaker swing. Yeah, there was one. Fuck, I do remember that. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to take Tampa 28, Dallas 21. Holy and uh, Cincy 31, Baltimore 13. Most points this week, Buffalo. Fewest points this week, surprise, Miami. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I was afraid there was going to be a lot of same picks this week, and there may be. Uh, so we're, we're close. In my picks for the week, I'm taking the Niners over the Seahawks, but I will say right now that I love that Geno Smith um, and, the, and the Seattle Seahawks make it into – the playoffs and Russell Wilson doesn't. Uh, I or I really I don't know if anybody any Bronco fans out there that might be like screw the game sports show right now. I want to unfollow because of this. I know there's Bronco fans. I know a few people, but the way I don't think there's many Bronco fans left after this season. That's... No, Russell Wilson. It's been released that he's not a great teammate, which surprises me because if everyone remembers something, they actually they probably don't. I want to make sure I, I share this. In in uh, in he was actually drafted, okay, by the Colorado Rockies in the fourth round of the 2010, 
MLB draft. If I if I thought if I remembered that correctly, uh, I may be incorrect, be, and I and I may uh, see what what I'm what I'm think what my point that I'm getting into here is that he was hired, okay, to be a part of uh, for for speaking uh, with a with a ma- with a, um, a major league baseball team, okay. And he was actually drafted by, and I apologize, uh, the Baltimore Orioles uh, was draft. It was drafted 41st round in 2007. Okay, then he was drafted by the Colorado Rockies in the fourth round in 2010. So that that is how that happened. Okay. He, I'm, I'm glad the Orioles have vastly improved since then. <laughs> and with Russell Wilson, okay, you can see some baseball stats with him, okay? In his MILB career stats, he had five homers, 26 RBIs. Uh, he, he played in baseball, but this isn't a baseball show. I bring this up because he was a dual athlete is what it's called, and the Texas Rangers uh, were a team in multiple uh, baseball teams were involved in having Russell Wilson as a spokesperson, okay, and uh, kind of a person who was going to be involved in motivating the players uh, and just being a, an image uh, for the Texas Rangers. And he actually had some. There's some pictures online of him in the in the field taking the ground balls and throwing the ball, and it was kind of almost like a trio type deal. You can see a a picture with him with Washington, uh, the the not the baseball team, the manager, and it's it's really funny. And the reason why I'm bringing up the the Russell Wilson is because he was so loved by Seattle when he was on the the field fielding ground balls and looking at that uh, dual athlete do, with baseball he there was people in the section cheering for him with the Seattle Seahawks signs and saying and he was so loved in Seattle and obviously there was love in uh, in Seattle by the fans but success overall and a lot of things have come out this year that de- that really determined that Russell was uh, Russell Wilson is not a strong teammate and has been quoted as a cancer and it's still uh, I, th- I think the fans in Seattle loved him on his rookie contract <laughs> now you got the Denver Broncos got all that money tied up into him oh that's a that is that is a lot so my whole story the why I went off track there was to make sure I brought up that Russell Wilson played baseball and he was a spokesperson or he was a motivator uh, for a particular baseball team and you can see stats of his baseball career online it's quite funny maybe he should have went the baseball routes now nah, uh, I bet, he won I bet a you Super if he Bowl. went <laughs> you, you went and looked at the teams who he uh, motivationally spoke to and I bet you they're not spectacular no I don't see the, the 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 Rangers having any success. I know what happened to them when they played the Blue Jays in the playoffs. But again, we are talking football, and Russell Wilson this year in football was not something to enjoy, but the Seattle Seahawks were. But unfortunately, this game against the Niners, they're not favorites going in, and they're not favorites by yours truly. The Jags over the Chargers. Like you said, Lawrence, man, guys fire, great hair. Oh, just Not even just the hair. It's just the flow of the game that he gives. Pun intended. The flow of hair, and he's got the flow of the game. It's just on fire. I'm going Lawrence all day and the Jags. Bills, Dolphins, you said it. I don't even need to echo that. It's it's. Bills are my Super Bowl pick this year. I am keeping that. Spoiler alert. Buffalo Bills are going to win that game. Vikings over the Giants. I think that that's one of the changes that you and I have. And also, I think the last game is going to be. But the, I'm picking the Vikings because they were at home. That was my deterring factor uh, of them winning. Truthfully, I think it's going to be a very entertaining football game. The Bengals over the Ravens. Quarterback issues in Baltimore in terms of who's playing. And the Bengals are hungry to try to get back to the Super Bowl. They're winning that football game. They're favorites, and for right reason. I am taking the Cowboys over the Bucks. All good things must come to an end. Tom Brady's marriage came to an end, and I'm not chirping him. That wasn't supposed to be a jab. But something good came to an end there, and his streak of 6-0 and is going to come to an end against the Cowboys this week. That is my take. And I'm taking it the opposite way in score for the tiebreaker. 28-21 Cowboys over the Buccaneers and then I'm taking 28-21 Bengals over the Ravens it's gonna be a lot of 28-21s it looks like this week most points Buffalo and you guessed it least points the Finns those are the picks coming from the pick hey, the Colts had the Vikings and the Cowboys on the ropes this year so neither of those teams deserve to even win this week <laughs> they don't even deserve to sniff victory and the best part is is the team 
the team that the Colts beat this year have a fucking bye week because they were so successful after they got embarrassed that they got a bye week in the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs are also doing jack shit this year because the Colts beat them. You see, and I want to I want to bring up that game about the Colts, that game that they came back and lost from. Because I want your reaction. What was going through your head on that? I know that's many weeks ago. Few 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 days have passed, obviously, but you haven't been able to share your your opinion. You kind of went into it about ten minutes ago or so, but truthfully, you know, the Falcons lost in the Super Bowl twenty eight three, and I still think that that when they were up twenty eight three, sorry, and I still think that that's worse than that loss, even though it's the worst loss in history. Do you agree with me so on like, that? One of these things that I've learned this season is that, like, and fans of Matt Ryan may not like this, but, like, Matt Ryan's old now. He's not Matt Ryan that was on the Atlanta Falcons. He's old man Matt Ryan, who's the Colts offensive line gave up on two days after he signed with the team. Matty Melting. Yeah, and Matt Sad. That's it. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't... We lost a couple games this year, and I mean, I'm happy for the draft pick. This is exactly thank you, Lovey Smith, for coaching for us on Sunday. That was awesome. <laughs> but like, I've never seen a team lose a game where the like in the fourth quarter the defense doesn't get to be on the field yeah. because your offense just goes out there and then throws a pick six, and then your offense goes back out there and throws a pick six, and then your offense goes how. <laughs> this yeah. is professional football. This isn't, this isn't league, touch, but, touch men's league or yeah, touch like it just I and that's I like I don't really have anything else. I mean, everyone else saw it too. It's they, they were lifeless. They didn't care. See, and yeah. to be completely honest, if you're in the NFL and you have the highest paid player, highest paid player at a position on your team, then your team has huge deficiencies somewhere else. And I mean, when you have two of the highest paid offensive linemen and they, they're out there giving her like city workers Good example. all season, uh, you know what I mean? You got issues. You know, the, the, the Colts, I did expect a little bit better this year. I was hoping for a bounce back because I've always had a, you know, enjoyment watching Matty sad, if you will, Matt sad and the success wasn't there. And the Colts have a, have a have a good pick, obviously, and they have some things to look come, at. In the come on, CJ Stroud. They have a couple <laughs> things that they need to address uh, for that for that team, and maybe just more than a couple. And it, it, I'm just so surprised that Matt Ryan played the way he did. But you've got a good point. He's older. The- He's old. I don't think the team was into him. Uh, you know what I mean? If the locker room's not buying in, then the team just doesn't jive. It's, 17, 18 weeks is a long time to have to be together and hate each other. It's like with Seattle. I wonder if it's Geno Smith who had the bounce back, which he did, or if it's Carroll that's the genius behind it all. You know, uh, I, yeah. I, I bring... hot, hot, t- hot take on that one is that it's a system. Yeah. It's, it's a I mean, system. R- Russell works. Wilson left and he fell apart. He looked like he mentally was incapable of even playing football. I almost Gino, Smith, Gino Smith came in after getting his head clocked off with a helmet when he played for the Jets, and all of a sudden is the second coming of Russell Wilson. Yeah, and I, the reason why I bring up the coaching side of things is because of the Steelers. You know, Tomlin has not ever had a losing season. I am going to say the word never. I know people say that's a could be a curse, curse word, but he has never had a losing season in Pittsburgh. And a lot of it was, okay, Big Ben, the Antonio Brown, the Juju Smith-Schusters, the, the, and the list goes on. A couple, you know, Steelers have won a couple Super Bowls. And they... The success there was what you just said, Hike, was the system. And this year, the Steelers were 2-6. and six. They were at a point where if you were a Steelers fan like I am, you're saying, okay, well, this is to be expected. You know, you sign Mitch Trubinsky, uh, butt fumble, or, or that's not butt fumble, that's Sanchez. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I know what you yeah, yeah, you know where I'm going with that. I'm not going to even explain myself with that. I just made that up as I go. But my point is Mitch Trubinsky was signed, and you just say, all right, we're packing it in because you get Kenny Pickett, which was a very good pick in the draft, you know, fan favorite. 
I didn't think he would take many snaps this year. Maybe it's either he was going to be the guy this year or he was just going to learn behind somebody. And I didn't think that somebody was going to be Trubinsky, but maybe truly that behind somebody is the coaches and Mike Tomlin. You know, the you learn how the Mike Tomlin system works, and if you buy in, it works. If you have a quarterback that can work with it, which it seems like Kenny Pickett will be the guy that can work with it, it's positive. The Steelers were a game they were minutes away from winning. Well, I shouldn't even say minutes is because of the way the, you know, the Dolphins did. But again, my point is minutes away, quarters away from being in the playoffs, somewhere where they did not think they were going to be even close to people not necessarily ask, even deserve to be. But true. True. They- and what was a big part of their success? I think hike was the return of Watt after injury. That was massive uh, for, for the team and the team just bought in. Right. And, the, the success comes from the coaching and the system and the, some players that can lead. And this is if you're a Steeler fan like myself, you should be very optimistic about what the future is going to look like. Because if this was supposed to be a losing season, you know, it, it's not so bad. We'll see how next year goes, however, if you're a Steeler guy but uh, or Steeler fan, girl, guy, uh, whatever you, you cheer for them in any which way, it's, it's something to look at as a positive. And the Lions and Packers are two other ones I want to get into. Hike, we're getting near the end point, and I want to give you the floor with the Packers. I'll, I'll take a little bit more with the Lions, and we'll kind of rotate with it. But I want to give you the floor with the Packers because Aaron Rodgers kept his game jersey. I'd be surprised if he went back to Green Bay next year, but we said that last year. Well, Green he signed Bay. a three-year extension, so I mean. Yeah, I, I wonder if there's a trade wondering, right? He said he's going to keep the jersey. Is he going to call it quits earlier? Is he going to get traded? Is Green Bay, like, should they be upset? Is this an absolute failure of a season? What are your thoughts on Green Bay? I think this was kind of going to be a wash going into the year because Rodgers was, you know, like it was everything was so up in the air. Yeah. And, I mean, aside from Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers, I, there's not a lot of players on that team that I could name. Yeah. Really. I mean, you have the um, that receiver that I picked up in fantasy whose name I don't know. <laughs> you know, like I'm just – I'm going through – they just there wasn't the Packers didn't do anything to wow anyone this year. I don't think. No. They they existed. Uh, they were maybe status quo as far as the NFC North goes, but we're going through this weird kind of era of the NFL now, where there's like a changing of the guard. Like a lot of these older, you know, the Aaron Rodgers aren't the guys anymore. No, they're not. The there's Tom a pl- there, there's well. a there's a place for them. But they're not the face of the league. No one wants to listen to their bullshit. You know, no one. If you're going to play football, play football. That's what Brady, pretty well, that's what Brady did this year. Yep. Yeah, I hate the guy. I'm not a big fan. I don't hate. Hate's a strong word. I dislike him. <laughs> uh, but really, once he got divorced, he just shut up and played football. Yeah, but he so Aaron Rodgers, you have this, there's always this like mystery and this dramatics around it. And then I got to watch the Pat McAfee podcast every week to see what he's going to say. It's like friggin' WWE, but Aaron Rodgers. And he dresses like Nicolas Cage. Uh, I don't put Nicolas Cage down like that. No, uh, although I will say Nicolas Cage is Dracula coming out. Oh my, oh my. That, that role is made for him, I think, in a little bit. But getting off track, the... The Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, I, it was like it was just something. It was entertainment all year. Or it, it just seems like a sad way. If this is the end, it's a kind of just a shitty way for it to end. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, it is. But uh, people say, "Will he leave?" And I don't. I don't think the way that it affects. It's the way that the agent of I believe it was his agent, if I remember the quote correctly said effects it, it all goes down to the effect of the Green Bay Packers. So after they lost to the Detroit Lions, the, he said during a post game that he was undecided about returning to Green Bay. All right. But he wouldn't have any regrets if he retired, was the words that he uses. And Rogers indicated that he wouldn't hold the Packers hostage by dragging out his decision. He also acknowledged the possibility of Green Bay wanting to give his 2021 a 2020 first round pick Jordan Love a chance to start, meaning that he would have to play elsewhere for his career. So, in that, and he kept his jersey after the game that I mentioned, like I mentioned, and he, 
it seems that he's open and he was so down on losing that maybe we're reading into that a little too much that it's just fresh after a game. It'd be more entertaining to see what happens after the Super Bowl is done and we hit the off season, but that's where Aaron Rodgers hit his dramatics last year, so maybe that not isn't the best way to go. I think he just hit the hard realization at this point in the season. Yep. I don't like it's I, you know, I think it, he's kind of seeing the window close. Yeah. And I don't know if he's really – I can't really sit down. I know there's a lot of teams that may want him, but but can they get him and will it work? And truthful, truth be told, when I'm going through teams, okay, unless the Broncos get rid of Russell Wilson, <laughs> which won't have a lot of money guarantee there, I don't I, – I don't know if the Colts is something. I don't know if the Texans are something, but, again, it's – it, I don't really see a great fit in, on a lot of options where he would be if, or in that championship mode. You know, I think if this is a, is a way to end it, it is sad, but I almost feel like it's the right time to peel off the Band-Aid. And if I'm the Packers, if he doesn't retire, I would trade Aaron Rodgers. I would try to find a oh, 100%. You I, have to. Yeah, whatever you can get for him. 39-year-old, he's turning 40. I, whatever you can get for him. Now, what I want to give love to is the Lions. The Detroit Lions hike provided a lot of entertainment. And I think I want to give credit where it's due with, with Jared Goff. And the reason why I want to give a little bit of love to Jared Goff, and I've been saying it on multiple shows since November, it seems like, because the last time that I talked about Jared Goff, he didn't throw a pick since November the 6th, okay? And up until that point, until the end of the season, Jared Goff did not throw a pick. Uh, it seems like, if I am if I am correct, he didn't throw a pick since November the... the um, that would be November against the Packers. November the 6th is what I have down. I if was going to say, I think the first week of November. Yeah, that was the last time that Jarek Goff threw an interception. And if you think I'm wrong, go ahead and look on Google, look on Lions Stats, DetroitLions.com, Game Summaries, wherever you want to go. Jarek Goff, ever since November the 6th, has not thrown a pick and if my stats are incorrect that means i'm blind which i wouldn't take it by because i do wear contacts and quite the big size bifocals when i'm not wearing glasses but base and my ears though are pretty good um and each game i always say oh golf another game where he didn't throw interceptions but i haven't heard media outlets talk about how he hasn't thrown an interception i have may have missed other networks i'm sure if i caught it other networks have caught it uh but to not throw a pick since november you know, you're looking at two, four, six, eight, nine games, Justin, without him throwing a pick, and that's an underrated stat, and that's a big part of having the football more, right? It allowed the Lions, a team that were at one point, I believe, one and six. After that game, November the 6th, they won. They came two and six, and they battled back at the end of the season to come nine and eight. It's almost like the Steelers, how they battled back. It was pretty much the same story. And it's just great to see, but it would have been so nice to see the Lions get into the playoffs, though. Yeah, I mean, I think they like they deserved it, but I think the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The pain of losing out. Yeah. This year, you know, after working back after that abysmal start to the season, <laughs> eating as many kneecaps as they possibly could to almost you know make it really to the to get fucked by Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Fucking Baker uh, Mayfield. <laughs> you know, like it just, it, I think that's going to sting to the point where the, or the Lions next season are going to be must see TV. I think so. They're going to be great to watch. If you want to go watch a football game and you're in the Sioux area, Algoma region, Ontario, New Detroit at all, just go down and see them. They, they're they're going to be enjoyable to watch this year. A hundred and fifty percent. They're not going to be like Dan, Dan Campbell's coming back. A hundred percent. There's no. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's no way they're getting rid of him. Like, a, uh, uh, Jamal's a free agent, but I I honestly think that the Lions re-signed it. Like, I just think there's a good thing going there right now. 
I wonder if uh, they see people ask, well, is this the, do you maybe trade Goff after the success? And no, I, 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 no, I, not no, at all. Not at all. You don't. You, you, you have a good pick coming up, right? Because you traded Stafford for Goff and Goff, who played a full season. May I, I know Stafford won a Super Bowl last year, which is great. The, the Rams had a great team, but they have a good pick now to the Lions. You know, you got a hit on that pick. To be honest, the Lions long term won this trade. Yes, that's that's a hundred percent. But I mean, like that's a uh, that's a trade tree for a different show. I hope, I really hope that and it's different in each sport, but that the run by the Lions appeals to players to sign with Detroit. But I like how Detroit's system is with you know how they've worked up some picks. But after they've worked up some draft picks, they just leave, right? And you know, I, I really hope that the Lions can bring success because not only does it help the show with some of the content that we do, I'm not trying to be biased in any which way, and everyone knows that Heichel and I are not Lions fans, but I, I share I, I share a little feel for the Lions. A lot of friends are Lions fans. It's 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 been tough times to watch, and they provided a lot of entertainment this year for everyone to enjoy. And I think Lions, despite how... This might suck, and it doesn't matter because you didn't make the playoffs. Sure, I get it, but you should literally be proud of what they accomplished this year for your fan or for your player on the Lions. It, it, it was tremendous to watch some great football all around. Hike, before we get to the conclusion, this is the In the Pocket segment. David McKay hosting this edition with Justin Heichel, EJ, Tyler, having the night off, and casual analyst Matt Primo and, and Jamie Antonello have been off long-term. Uh, so you got me and Hype. LTIR. With, uh, LTIR for sure. Robodot Island, if you will. Uh, the uh, What I want to do before we get into the show is obviously give love to Sports Center Bar and Grill. Uh, for Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario's best sports bar. Coincidence, we've been there every year that they've won the award. We've been a part of them. Okay, I told Frank that the other day. I said it's not a coincidence, and he shared a good laugh, and he allowed us to have a Christmas party there. So uh, I think it, I think it made I think it made sense. I think he understands. Uh, but we're very excited to state that in season seven we will be returning to Sports Center Bar and Grill. We won't be doing it about this year as expected. Uh, we had some unexpected occurrences, obviously, with the show and delayed a few things. So we decided we're going to finish in the pocket the way we've been doing it the last couple of years through the audio and then the video format to end the year. We do hope to have our Super Bowl preview or at least Super Bowl show. At the very least, hope to have that on video by then for our last edition. It'd be a great way to kick off and uh, the Super Bowl show, but also end the season. But we do plan to have it in the pocket at Sports Center again next year. Uh, be very exciting to get back in person there but the complicated part is going to be setting up video there don't know if that's going to work out but nonetheless we will be back at sports center for season seven that'll be for next season though i want to make sure i give people that reassurance and check out flawless roofing too flawlessroofing.ca now justin i want to give you the floor and any final points that you want to bring up in the world of football before we uh run for the touchdown or go for the extra two whatever whatever analogy people want us to use at the conclusion of the show I, I, honestly, I'm going to be honest. I don't have much this week. I'm uh, kind of excited to get into the playoffs here and, uh, you know, see uh, see what transpires. I mean, sure, I'll have a couple more hot takes next week, but I think in the last week or so, everyone's kind of been beat to death on the uh, the DeMar Hamlin thing. Yeah. And he's released from hospital. That's good. Let's move forward now. Yep. Uh, it'd be nice to see him just supporting the team, even on the sidelines before the end of the season. I think that'd give a lot of people a lot of closure on that situation. And, you know what? Let's uh, look forward to a healthy rest of the season. Like that. Very well said, my friend. Now, I picked Buffalo to win the Super Bowl. Who's your team? I didn't we we'll say it. Well, I'm putting it up. I wasn't going to ask, but who's your who's your who's your Super Bowl favorite? Honestly, right. It's kind of a crapshoot right now. I like I'm staring at everything and I don't Buffalo's like the uh the flashy sexy pick there, but um <sighs> I don't want I, like, I am really torn if I had mm, I don't want to do it do it I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Bengals it's gonna be the Bengals oh no that's gross <laughs> yeah that, that's that, well that's I gross. I, I, wa- I wanted to say Jacksonville I was torn between the cat teams so what about what about the chances of the Dallas Cowboys there are a good number of cowboy fans do they have a chance I know you said they weren't going to beat the Packers, so maybe I shouldn't ask you that. But... If the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl, it means that the Toronto Maple Leafs are going undefeated the rest of the season <laughs> all the way to the Stanley Cup. 
And there you have it, Cowboy fans. Do not get so, your hopes up. Do not. All those Cowboy fans that want to mouth off about the Leafs not winning anything since 67. Who the fuck cares? You haven't won a Super Bowl since I had a hairline and fucking Legos were, you know, I was and playing And Beanie with them. Babies. And Beanie Babies. Like, right? it's just relax. Remember Marbles, too? I don't mean to go off track. Remember Marbles? Do you ever play with Marbles? Did you play with that as a kid? No, I'm not a big, uh, not a big marble guy. My sister was, and then I took the toys after. Oh, nonetheless, we're getting off. Track. To be honest, I think I was more of the uh, hazard. Uh, you know, they were. I would eat them, and I would choke on them. So it was probably just better to not have them around. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. Ooh, ooh, piece of candy. Yeah, ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> busting my teeth out, fucking <laughs> eating balls of glass. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. So, Hike, I appreciate you taking the time. Welcome back uh, next week. We don't know who's going to be hosting next week. It may be AJ, maybe yourself. I do plan that I will be on the show, but from a, a, a co-host perspective, which will be a change. Could be my dog. Uh, yeah, could be your dog. Could be Hannah, my fiance. No, I'm, I don't know. I don't want to throw her under the bus like that. Uh, <laughs> As she's sitting somewhere in the house like, don't fucking say my name. What the fuck? Why has my name been said? Okay, right. Yeah. Sued. Awesome. Uh, so, but that will be the edition next week it'll be on wednesday uh january uh, the 18th i do plan for pro bowl week just so listeners know the pro bowl week and break we won't have a show we did thank that. thank we, god we don't support the pro bowl here yeah, we don't we don't uh keep that we'll leave that to the big networks to hold not saying we're not a big network but we're not we're not the the bigger networks you know what i'm saying uh but we don't need to do that so we're, that's the only time we're gonna have a week off between now and the end of the football season so lots of great content to come into the world of football um and i also want to give love again to sports center bar and grill and flawless roofing sure seal incorporated and and to the Game Entertainment Media for being the powered by of the Game Sports Show. A lot of great things coming this year, and this was a great way to start off 2023 with our new format. Kind of doesn't sound new because it is yours truly still uh, hosting this edition, but that's the point. Rotational host basis is going to be very fun, and the listeners, yeah, that being you, will enjoy it for sure. And I want to remind everyone, if you're doing a podcast Reach out to me. If you're interested in doing a sports podcast, we can look at the Game Sports Show umbrella. Or if you're looking at doing a podcast in general, air it on TGEM, and we can also assist on getting it started for you. And for the Game Sports Show, we are actually looking to have people start and even continue because it used to be a show on this platform. We are looking to have a basketball podcast to resume on this platform. And if you're doing a sports show, a sports podcast and you're looking at even doing wrestling, feel free. Let me know. We would love to work with you on that. Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest, if someone wants to do uh, a wrestling show, I would be interested. Oh, there we go. Heiko would probably join. We do have a uh, we do have a wrestling been, character. I'll, I'll as be well. honest. I've been I've been dabbling since uh, I had the baby around. Oh, there you go. See now, anyone doing wrestling? There you go. You already got someone who will join you. Bing, bang, boom, and we even have a wrestling character on our staff. You can check that out on our staff page on thegamesportshow dot com. Intercontinental Inch, who is begging to jump onto a wrestling show and it's hilarious when he's on it so let me tell you you want to do wrestling you want to do basketball we'll help you out or if you're just doing a general podcast about lifestyle or you're doing workouts whatever you're doing we can also have you aired on the tgem platform as well very 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 um, open to opportunities and discussion here on the kane sports show and of course game entertainment and media justin Thank you, my friend, again. Very excited to have you back. Uh, we missed you on here, obviously, for appropriate reason. And, and inappropriate reason. And inappropriate. Yes, good touch. And I want to say thank you to the listeners for tuning in. Make sure you hit like, follow, and subscribe on all the platforms of the Game Sports Show. And I'm here to remind you, keep your stick on the ice, swing your bats, catch your touchdowns, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah. <laughs>